What I want to do today is explore and expand upon one of our themes for this conference, which is roots. And the basic definition of a root is the basic cause, the source, or origin of something. And for me, the word root conjures up in my mind the image of a tree. And of course, the primary function of the roots is to deliver precious, life-giving water to the rest of the tree. Without the roots, and more importantly, without that water, the tree simply won't survive. We humans really aren't that much different from the tree. 60% of our bodies are comprised of water. We can go weeks without eating, but we can only go days without a sip of water. Quite simply, without water, life as we know it would not exist. When I was putting this presentation together, what I came to realize is that the tree, humans, were the same, and that water really is the root of everything. And so what I'd like us to contemplate today is, is the role that water plays as a root for our existence, our environment, civilization, and our future. And it's really easy for me to put all of this into the context of the work that's been done in the aquifer of this area, the cenotes, the underground rivers. And through my own experience being involved in that, I've come to have a tremendous perspective on the issue of water in this region and also at a global level. Water is the essence of everything, of our existence. And I don't think there's a better way to contemplate our existence from this perspective right here. This is our home, the beautiful spaceship Earth, hurtling through space. And when I look up at it, I'm struck by a number of things. Number one is just how beautiful it is, how serene it is. And much of that beauty is derived from the beautiful blue color that shines back at us. As we all know, 75% of this planet is covered by water. And it's easy to look down and think, what's the problem? There's plenty of water on the surface of the Earth. But if by magic we were able to take all the water that exists on the planet and place it in one single volume, that's what it would look like. That sphere is at the exact same scale as the spinning Earth right next to it. It would measure 1,382 kilometers in diameter, which is roughly the distance from here in Cancun to Mexico City. That's all the water in the world. Oceans, lakes, rivers, atmosphere, streams, groundwater, even our tears and our sweat count. All the water in the world. If that's shocking, remember, we depend on fresh water. 3% of that total, which is represented here, that's all the fresh water in the world. That sphere, that volume would measure approximately 270 kilometers from one side to the other. It would fit very nicely right on top of the Yucatan Peninsula. But it's even more shocking than that because there's only a small portion of that sphere that's available for human consumption. What the little dot here represents 56 kilometers in diameter is all the water contained in rivers and lakes in the world. And that's where 80% of humanity gets their water every day. 56 kilometers, that's Cancun to Playa del Carmen. When we add groundwater to that, we come to the realization that of all the water that exists in the world, just a little over half of 1% of it is available for human consumption. And now when I look down on the planet, it seems a lot more fragile to me. Water is the root of our existence. Water is also the root of our environment. And let's look at beautiful Quintana Roo. Imagine for a minute that water didn't exist in this area. What would the caletas look like? What would our beautiful beaches look like? What would Siancan look like? What would the cenotes look like? 
I would argue that the essence of what we sell and why millions of people come here each year is water. Without it, the economy of this area would struggle to exist. The cenotes are what I'm passionate about. And as one of the few sources of superficial water across the peninsula, they serve as magnets to the incredible wildlife that inhabits the jungles of this area. What I want to do is share with you all a quick video to prove my point. And this is part of an ongoing effort that my civil association, SINDAC, and Fundación Selva Maya have. We're just out of pure curiosity, we decided to start putting motion sensing cameras into cenotes to see what was going in there when we weren't there. And this is what we captured. A beautiful jaguar. Obviously, if cenotes are important enough for apex predators, and this individual repeatedly comes down into this cenote, fortunately when we're not there, <laughs> they're important for all of us. The cenotes are also portals into one of the largest and most pristine aquifers in all of Mexico. And it represents, for people like me, one of the last true regions on the planet where true physical human exploration can take place. When we pitch into a cenote with our equipment on, we literally have no idea where that journey is going to take us. It's also exploration with purpose. The work that we do ties into research in biology, hydrology, paleontology, archaeology, among many other disciplines. In the last 30 years, the cave diving community in this region has explored and mapped and documented well over 1,300 kilometers of passageway in over 330 different caves and cave systems, including two of the longest caves anywhere on planet Earth, wet or dry. And what we've come to prove through our work is that just like the roots of the tree, these cave systems serve as conduits for life-giving water as it's transported from the jungle interior all the way out to the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef. And it's hard for people to understand why anybody would want to go cave diving, but as this picture so beautifully demonstrates, it is, for me, one of the most real and sublime and beautiful places I could have ever imagined to have the privilege to go into. Water is the root of our environment. It's also the root of civilization. And over years, the cave diving community here has discovered numerous sites that contain both the remains of humans and fauna and megafauna that date back to the last ice age. Who were these people? How did they get here? Where did they come from? What did this area look like 13,000 years ago? These are all answers that we hope to answer through scientific study of sites just like this. The one thing we're certain of is that these animals and these people ventured into these caves, which were dry at this time, in search of water. The Maya, they had their relationship with the cenotes in the water. Evidence of human sacrifice in the cenotes points to a very complex relationship that the Maya shared with their gods, particularly Chak, the rain god. Those roots continue today, evidenced in the beautiful temples left by the Maya. And water played a role in all of these sites. Shlapak and Muyil in Siankan, Koba next to its lake, Shelha next to its caleta and cenotes, the sacred cenote of Chichen Itza, El Rey here in Cancun and Tulum, all rooted next to the beautiful water of this region. And today, the modern Maya continue on, firmly rooted in this area. Their landscape, their traditions have been transformed over the last 40 years as this area has developed. Yet the one thing 
that remains constant in their life, in our lives, in the lives of the first people to arrive here 13,000 years ago, is the importance of water. Water is the root of civilization. It's also the root of our future, and the way in which we manage water is critical to our future. And there's a few things I'd like to explore with you here. Today, the human population of our planet stands at about 7.3 billion people. Every day, 750 million people wake up and do not have access to good, clean drinking water. 2.5 billion people don't have access to improved sanitation. In fact, more people have access to cell phones today than they do to toilets. 70% of the industrial waste in the developing world is left untreated. 90% of the sewage in the developing world is left untreated. And as a result, 850,000 people a year die from waterborne diseases. And that has a cost to the worldwide economy of over $260 billion a year. 11 billion is the projected population for planet Earth by the end of this century. And what I want you all to come back to and remember, that's where 80% of the world's population gets its water from. There's some good news, though. It's been proven that for every $1 spent on infrastructure to provide clean drinking water, safe drinking water to a population, and improve sanitation, there's a $4 return in the investment to that economy. Water is the root of our future. And in the end, this is my vision right here, harmony. Man, nature, the roots, water. We take care of the water, we take care of ourselves, and we take care of our existence, our environment, civilization, and our future. Thank you very much. Thank you.